Hi guys! Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show, the Christmas edition. You know my sidekick Rudolph. I mean John. Johnny Rudolph. Johnny Rudolph. Yeah, that's my stripper name. <laughs> I didn't know you were a stripper. It could be. You could be. It could be. Have you seen your legs? Yeah, I look at them all the time. <laughs> Do you look down at them and just get yourself turned oh, on? Seriously. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome. Hi Leslie. Hi Leslie. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show, this very serious edition of your holiday magic. Yeah. Merry We're Christmas, also, Isabel. Hi Karen. We're also doing a, a review of the um, top marital aids. Marital aids. Marital aids. Marital aids. Seasonal marital Season aids. So look at this combination, Rudolph nose and ball gag. Right, and I can use this for a ball. So Merry Christmas to you all on this very. Oh, I lost my I lost my antlers. Oh. Okay. So I called this episode "Having a Peace in Your World That Nobody Has to Understand," <laughs> <laughs> and part of that is like having fun in ways that nobody has to understand. Mm -hmm. So, but I brought you on here, Mr. Su Mr. Rudolph. Yes. It does very distracting. Johnny Rudolph. Johnny Rudolph. <laughs> I take tips in my underwear. Just, just zero. Saying. I've had zero to drink. Nothing. I've had nothing to drink. Oh, I've had coffee. coffee. There, there might be something in the coffee. I There's know. nothing. In the the sugar. Did you? That's so good. So I'm so glad you guys are here. Merry Christmas. And um, do you want? You can. Do you? You can. Do you want to leave it on? You can. I, it's my, nice. My, my face is about to explode from the pressure. <laughs> Antlers and this, 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 this is made for kids. This is my. I don't idea. know why this ball gag was made for kids. <laughs> What's that all about? I don't know. It's weird. Or, or maybe it's a. Maybe it's. It a, was at the dollar store. Maybe it's a. Bondage maybe they don't thing. care. Maybe it's a bondage thing. But I will. Yeah. I've bond. Yeah. Now you can't talk. Yeah. Put it. Put it in your mouth so you can see. Now you can't. Oh. Talk. Oh. 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 <laughs> All right, we have a serious topic yeah. today, people. Yeah. Ha have a kinky Christmas, everyone. <laughs> have a kink, very kinky Christmas. So my very serious topic today is, I forget, not, okay. C commu communication? No, no, but we're going to change it to that. So, Merry Bondage. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so I brought John on here today because my topic was like having a peace in your world that goes beyond anybody else understanding it. And... Um, I've been really, really, really going through it lately, like choosing a lot of change and choosing a lot of, uh, <laughs> thanks, Sarah Chelly. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of change and he's been with me through all of it. And you know that it's changed every facet of our relationship. So I thought I'd bring him on here today to really talk about some of the things we're choosing, um, in our relationship, especially in regards to communication. Because this time of year, I know you're around a lot of family and a lot of people, and sometimes that's easy and fun, and sometimes it's not as easy and not as fun. And um, I think anytime you know you've got people, Merry Christmas, you guys. Anytime you have people in your world, um, there's there's the X factor of you've got people in your world. People are unpredictable, and you're unpredictable, and then there's all these unpredictable, and then there's history, and then there's stuff. So. Um, so, so yesterday we had a day. It was fine. It was good. We got up in the morning and things and you went and did your thing and then he came back and um, we had a little like a 30 second communication moment where he said one thing and I said another thing and then he, I thought he got titchy and so I called him on it and then he said, well, I don't know what, and then it was sort of like that. That's my version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, the bottom line was I walked out of the room. And so we got to bed and, and that was it. it. Like it didn't go very far. It didn't get really escalated. It was just one of those things where, you know, we've been having more of those, I would say, um, as we're changed, as we're both changing and growing into more of who we are and, you know, whatever. We've been having more of those like, like kind of, what would you call them? I don't know. I call them angsty moments, but you might call them something else. Uh, uh, abrasive. I don't know. Yeah. Something where we like just that. sort of rub each other mm -hmm. the wrong way. And so <laughs> every time I nod, it's... Oh, 
So what I did last yeah. night was... It didn't come to that. It didn't though. come to the sword, but this is sort of my, my pattern. It's like... <laughs> in fact, we did a Facebook Live last week uh, with our housemates, and one of my tools that I gave people was you could just kill them, right? So I'm not afraid to kill. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we were talking last night. We were trying to sort through basically what the problem was, because that's sort of what you're taught to do in relationships. It's like... Figure out what the problem is so that you can fix it, so that it doesn't happen anymore, so that you can have peace. And I have been really choosing um, my own inner reality a lot lately. Like, and my inner reality has a lot of peace in it now and a lot of space and sometimes has intensity, but more and more and more I'm choosing to be happy and peaceful. And yesterday I was just really peaceful. And then so when that moment occurred, for me it was like, you're not being peaceful, I'm leaving the room. Bah! You know, and so I did. And then it was fine and I was peaceful again, which is like an easy solution for when you're around other people. You just leave them, right? They're being annoying. You just go away. Well, the thing is, we live in the same bedroom. So later that night, we're in the same room, you know, we live in the same house and, and that. Which, by the way, it's, it's crazy, but it's, you know, awesome. but true that it's awesome. It yeah. is really awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like 99% of the time, it's really, really awesome. Merry Christmas. Hi, Sarah. And, um. So anyway, we're in bed last night and really trying to get to the bottom of what happened. And I may have started the conversation. I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it was actually from a tan- off from a tangent somewhere else. We're talking about something else. And then it turned into like a um, sort of like a post game analysis of, you know, what the happened? clash. Yeah. The clash. Yeah. What happened? Why? How, what can we do not to make it happen again? And what ended up started happening was like, was it was very mild. It wasn't like a clash of the titans, but it was like well, that's not actually what happened. And this is more my perception of it. And this is my perception of it. And this is my recap. So it may have happened different in your world. I know, but I got to this point where I realized we weren't getting anywhere. Like we really were like either defending our point of view or trying to be right. Or, um, it wasn't like, it wasn't creating anything. And I finally just stopped it and said, Hey, what do we, what do we desire to create here? What do we want to create? Which stopped us both dead in our tracks because we started looking at that energy and none of us had anything to say. And what I realized for myself, and you ended up talking first, was that I didn't have a target of what I wanted to create. I was just like trying to fix something that wasn't even broken or something. Like I didn't actually have a creative bone in my body at that moment. I, I was just trying to fix a problem. And I, and I don't know what it was for you, but do you want to share? And then it wasn't really all that clear for me either you know because you're in that in that mode of like trying to analyze something that had already been so we're already different because we're now we're talking about this thing that already was and i really thought hard about what what is it when you said what is it that you want to create <laughs> uh, and really it wasn't that i wanted any of us to change what we were doing necessarily it's just more like can we have a space where we can be. we can just be and be with this as well and just and just have the i'm not sure what to even call it the vulnerability or guard barriers down of just just voicing what it is for us individually and not have it create something other than a clash or right and wrong and you and me and versus mm-hmm. this and that and, and not make it a polar thing, not make it a confrontation. Yeah. And what I realize personally is that I can only make him wrong or make somebody else wrong for something I'm judging myself for. I, I can't make anybody wrong for stuff that I don't judge myself for. So like when I throw him under the bus or, you know, I'm like, you, you're being titchy, for example, that may be true, but what's on the other side of that for me, and I'm seeing this everywhere in my life right now, so I wanted to share it with you just in case it helps you and yours, is that on the other side of you're being titchy, you're doing this, is something that I'm judging me for, but I'm not acknowledging that I'm judging me for it, and it's it's showing up in that other person, like so, and, and we talked about this last night, how you'll tend to, I'm going to use the word mimic for lack of a better word, but if I'm in a space, you'll tend to sort of mirror that space or be that energy. Like if I'm not. Yeah, I tend to I tend to absorb my environment and I just become that. So it works well in 
sort of one-on-one -on -one interpersonal situations, let's say I want to sit down and have a chat with somebody, I tend to just become the same energy that the person I'm speaking with. Which is a capacity. Yeah. Like that's called, we call that modulating in, as the, in the Symphony of Possibilities class, we call it modulating your energy to, to what somebody else is being. Where it can not serve you sometimes is when somebody else is being less than what they are. If somebody else is being um, unhappy, for example, and you're modulating your energy to them being unhappy, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you get to be unhappy too. Mm -hmm. And I don't, it's not a conscious thing. It just, it just, I get that way. And then I become that. Right. And then, and then, and then we sort that's yeah. usually when we clash because mm -hmm. then he's being what he thinks that he's just being what I'm being. And then we like, and so I don't know our way out of this. And this is the other thing I wanted to give you guys is that all of you guys who are playing with access consciousness tools are creating realities that don't have any reference points. You know, like you're, you're creating relationship realities that may have never existed on the planet before. And that's what, like every time we go into another one of these, um, growth spurts, sort of, which we're con kind of constantly in because um, I can't stop. I can't stop. It won't stop. Um, what What was I saying? Every time we go through one of these, we have to like sort out what this is again. <laughs> How do we get through this? And really what it comes down to all the time in every relationship is what do you desire to create? What That's it. And that's what I realized last night after we were going back and forth and we weren't getting anywhere, we were getting more frustrated and I was getting more like, oh, fuck off. I just want to go to bed. And I was like, okay, stop, just stop. What do you desire to create? And that one question was so great because it wasn't a question we were being in that moment. And it brought us to wondering about what we were desiring to create. And I just, I just turned to him and I just looked at him and I was like, you know what? I just, I just desire gratitude for you and allowance and space. And that's, that's what I desire with you and with me. And I said, I'm not great at that all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm, and especially when I'm judging myself for, and what's been going on is I've been going through so many changes that I, I feel like are affecting him, judging myself for that, but not sharing that with me or him and not acknowledging it and getting vulnerable with myself about that. And if, if I don't get vulnerable with where I'm judging myself, then I'm gonna blame you for it. How'd you get so lucky? I'm so lucky. And just a little realization here is that I was, I'm really grateful that, that Crystal just said, stop. Because I'm a, I'm a fixer and never give in, never give up, never stop. Never give, never so quit. So if, 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 if never quit, I, I, I have a lousy memory. <laughs> it's, um, it's it's a thing that I'm I be so you know I'm just gonna keep going like let's let's fix this let's keep talking and and um, it's not going anywhere. So, no, we're digging ourselves yeah. into a hole, and that's the thing is like as soon as you assume that something's a problem, you dig yourself into a hole. And so if nothing's a problem and everything's a choice, like if if nothing about your relationships with anybody is a problem and everything's a choice, what do you desire to create? Now you may not have a situation where you are you have another person that will ask that with you then use the sword. Mm -hmm. No, don't use the sword. Maybe. But you can be that. <laughs> you can be that for you and for the people in your life. You can actually be that for you. And um, and that's actually what... The, 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 the few things that I want to give you today is that, one, when you're not acknowledging yourself, when you're not acknowledging that you're judging you, you're going to feel torn up inside. As soon as you start to acknowledge anything about you, how great you are, how amazing you are, but if you can't get there like where you're judging yourself and just be with that, that's when you're going to start to have more ease. Because when you're resisting what you're choosing inside, there's no ease. There, and there's no ease in your relationships either because it will come out all over your relationships because you've got this agenda to hide what you're judging yourself for. And so when you're functioning from an agenda, that's what creates all the disease. And, um, and so I've been really asking and don't use this tool cause it will make your life too easy and also simultaneously uncomfortable, but I've been asking to really live fully exposed, like to really have mm. all of my places where I judge myself and really live fully exposed. And I don't know how that's going to show up. Like, you know, well, I'm, I'm all for fully exposed. Yes, I know. You kn you knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. <laughs> I'm nothing if not predictable. Fully exposed people. Yeah. 
But yes, go on. No, I think that's all I had to say about that. Mm -hmm. So if you are feeling brave and ballsy, I would ask that. Like, what would it take to live beyond your agendas and actually live fully exposed? You know, show all the places where you may be judging yourself or hard on yourself or hating yourself for stuff. And, and then just snuggle up next to that judgment. Mm -hmm. Put all your barriers down. Receive it and go, okay, so what's beyond this? What choices do I have beyond this that I've never considered? And that's really what we did last night. Mm -hmm. What's beyond this? This is stupid. This mm -hmm. is not working. Mm -hmm. What do we want to choose now? And within five minutes, we changed the energy. And we were making out and snogging. Totally. And totally. Totally. Totally, totally snogging. Yeah. I didn't even have to wear these for that to happen. I mean, and these are so sexy. Mm. I'm answering the call. So that's my relationship tools for you this Christmas. I brought my piano, you guys. You know, the thing is, like, I haven't practiced Christmas music, so don't get excited. I'm just going to play, but... <laughs> Hi. You're, it's kind of like an Elton John thing you got going on here now. It's the glasses and the yeah, piano. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Benny and the Jets. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a good audio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so thank you. Thank you. Can I uh, can I use your bum space to just? I'm, I'm gonna just flail my arms across the keys. Bye. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. So, use it if you need it. Use them if you need them. Wear your glasses. And what I want to do. Um, I want to take you through an exercise where you actually get to be with you. And I realized as I was looking at this Christmas show and what I actually wanted to create for you was this place for all of us where it was okay to be us, you know? It's okay to be you. It's okay to be you. And, you know, you don't have to be any different than you are. And you get to be... Sometimes you're with family that like celebrates you and sometimes you're not and it doesn't matter you get to just be who you are and you know for me personally like I've I've been really getting cozy with all the places where I've secretly judged myself and not acknowledged it and it's for things that I probably ever didn't even do but I've been afraid that I would do or did you know afraid that I could destroy people or that, or that I did destroy people or I did create realities where people were struggling and suffering, right? Like I've been really getting close to those judgments because I've been trying to hide them. And every time you try to hide them, that's when your life gets hard. That's just when your life gets hard. That's those agendas that Gary's been talking about. Mary and Ella, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, you guys. you can close your eyes and just like just get in touch with your body and just become aware of where you're sitting and where your arms are in space and where your feet are and that's just your body and I just want in this in this moment like what if you could just have this intense gratitude for your body even if you've eaten too much too much cake too much cider too much eggnog what if the gratitude for your body wasn't based on anything but just because you have one and it carries you around and just let every 
molecule, know that you're here. So it's singing in, in your body and every molecule of your body just starts to sing and hum. And then let your, the tendrils of your body and the energy in your being go down into the earth. chose to be here this day. You chose to be here this day, this time. You chose to be on the planet now. So what do you know? What do you know? And maybe you've been refusing that you know, denying that you know, pretending that you don't know. That you came here to tell us to be, to show us. What seed of consciousness are you here to share and be with the world? What seed of consciousness did you take up to protect that you can now stop protecting and gift the world with you? You are the gift that this world's been asking for. And all it takes is for you to know it and choose it and be it even though you have no idea what that means. You have no idea what that means. There's no reference points, hi Maxi, for being the gift that you are. No one can show you how to do it. And it's gonna be wonky sometimes and uncomfortable and fun and joyful. And it's gonna require a lot of choice. Into places where you don't know how to go and you have no map. You have you. So let this energy that you are just hover right outside your skin and then let it fill the room that you're in. Even if you're within a room with other people. Especially if you're in a room with other people. Put all your barriers down and let your energy fill that room. And then I want you to pull energy through everybody you're with and everybody you're not with. Put all the people in front of you that you're either not grateful for or you are grateful for. Put them in front of you and pull all the energy of the universe through them. through them and through you until just keep pulling and you don't have to know how to do this through them through your body and just keep a flow going until something just shifts hi Helen what if the best and biggest and most amazing gift that you can give anyone this Christmas is the gift of you with no barriers, just being all of you. I love your little son, Asgard. Hi, Helen. Hi, Karen. What space can you be for you today? Start being for you every day. What allowance can you be? What, what presence can you be with you? With all the places where you think you're terrible and all the places where you know you're great, what would it be like to live exposed? Having your back, hi Ashley. Where you have to defend you, which isn't actually having your back, because somewhere if you're defending you, you don't believe that you deserve to be defended, which is why you're defending, which is weird. But just receiving. Hi, Karen. And receiving you. 
And the thing is, that's not significant. It doesn't have any solidity to it, and it doesn't really feel like much. But it can be this like really warm sense of peace, and joy, and gratitude. Sometimes there's tears, sometimes there's laughter. The thing that kills the planet, the thing that hurts the planet, the thing that hurts you and your body is the judgment of you. And sometimes you don't even know you're judging you and you just get hints. You get hints in your relationships and you get hints in your life. What if you just ask the universe to show you everywhere you're functioning from so that you can change it? Because that's what the gift of awareness. The gift of awareness is that you see finally, what's actually going on, and then you have another choice. So it's never terrible that you see where you're functioning from. What if you didn't have to hide you from anybody? What would that be like? What would that be like to just be you in all of your messy glory? Because it is glory. And anywhere you haven't acknowledged what you've created this year, what you've created today, what you've created this holiday season, will you destroy and then create that? Right, Ron Gabet, Pipok Comedy, Shorts, Boys and Beyonds. What if today you take a moment or all day to just like really receive from all the choices that you've been making and, and really go, what would it take to have a totally exponentialized reality this year? Exponentialized money, exponentialized joy, exponentialized phenomenal living. Thanks, Eva. So I wish you a very Merry Christmas. We wish you a very Merry Christmas. Let your holidays be very unserious and very filled with gratitude. And what else is possible now? <laughs> I adore you guys. Thank you for being live. Oh. <laughs> I will see you again soon. <laughs>